The trauma team carry a reputation of an untouchable force not to be crossed. Should one decide to try his or her luck at overpowering a TT unit, and if in the unlikely event they were to succeed, it would become rapidly apparent that they have just sealed their fate of a short life. The trauma team does not forget. They do not forgive. Now you have a citywide bounty on your head going out to all gangs on top of the immense TT threat itself. Whilst they are a professional business focused entity, reputation and fear must be preserved. No one escapes. This risk, this danger, will undoubtedly tempt players to roll the dice of chance if only out of curiosity or to test their might against a formidable foe. Exact interactions and possibilities between you and TTI in-game aren't public knowledge yet, but the potential is right there within the lore of Cyberpunk 2077. Good day everyone, Complaining Gamer here. Many months have passed since I covered the lore behind Trauma Team International. I was blown away by the community response to my narration of One Night with the Trauma Team, which took a look at the day in the life of a TT member. 11.23, solo down on grounds of Raven Microsib Inc. Corp security became hostile and refused to allow extraction procedures of patient, claiming first rights due to Corporate Espionage Act of 2009. No one in team had ever heard of the act, and in accordance with standard procedure, we continued with extraction. Sourced directly from Cyberpunk 2020 law book and manual, page 231, a book which many of you know is part of the foundation for CDPR's Cyberpunk 2077 and can be bought right now on the Artalzorian Games website. Additionally, if you'd like to show your support for this faction, then you can pick up a Combat Helmet t-shirt on the CDPR store. Since my first exploration into the trauma team, new content emerged that we can dissect showing them in action where we can break down mechanics and functions as well as the interesting world of how life imitates art whilst also answering your most asked questions. If you're just beginning your trauma team journey then pause this video and get yourself up to speed by checking out my earlier coverage on them. In the words of Cyberpunk 2020 creator Mike Pondsmith, Trauma Team was invented because at the time I was writing Cyberpunk, I had no way to get a cleric or healer on scene fast enough to save a dying player. The AV4 came about because a paramedic pal of mine was always pitching about the idiot drivers blocking his ambulance when on a call and used to say it was easier when he was in evac choppers. The result was a group of heavily armed medics who showed up in a flying ambulance to save your butt in 3 minutes. Later, a very similar version just showed up in Shadowrun, which tells me they had the same problem we had. This answer from Pondsmith should also clear up any confusion relating to similarities with Shadowrun's Dock Wagon. As one of the most powerful corporations, Trauma Team Inc. is quickly becoming a fan favourite, most likely due to the mixture of mystery surrounding them and badassery they exude. One fan who goes by the handle Shadinsky has taken his passion for this group to the next level in the form of cosplay, whose creation is absolutely fantastic and deserves some attention, especially with the newly announced competition. Now, this does however beg the question of how close can we get to TT in-game? When asked whether we could join Trauma Team, CDPR community manager Lilaya responded by simply saying you cannot. Within the same official forum thread was a poll indicating what the people would like to see from interactions with this group. The top three outcomes being a mechanic where they show up if you harm NPCs that are their clientele, random world encounters involving TT, and quests working with them. Personally, I still have my fingers crossed for potential DLC. Whilst society today hasn't quite deteriorated into a lawless dystopia yet, we do have a startling reminder of how life can imitate art and vice versa. Back in June of 2018, Mike Pondsmith, creator of Cyberpunk 2020, posted on Reddit the image of a seemingly innocent card which read Medjet Horizon, Medical Security Crisis Response. Medjet is a private membership-based, globally connected travel insurance operating 24-7, 365 days a year. Their private fleet of air ambulances and highly trained specialists are ready to respond to medical emergencies at any time, much like Trauma Team International. Naturally, as a member, you'll carry a membership card. 
The difference being that a TT member emergency can be triggered through a transmitter which most commonly comes in the form of a plastic card which is activated by bending it in half. Alternatively, you may opt to carry a dead man transmitter which will activate and automatically signal a trauma team the moment your brainwave pattern falls into a coma state. Medjet offers a selection of membership types and levels, all at surprisingly good prices. If your focus is medical, then go with Medjet Assist. If you need an added layer of security, however, then you'll want Medjet Horizon. Using Focus Point International's Global Crisis Response Center, you are covered under threat of terrorism, kidnap for ransom, political threat, hijacking, natural disaster, disappearance, violent crime, wrongful detention, blackmail and extortion, and a pandemic. The Crisis Response Network is tailored to your individual situation and may involve global evacuation and rescue, emergency medical referral assistance, legal referral assistance, emergency translation, and emergency communication to family. This truly is a real-life trauma team. Annual memberships for Medjet Horizon start at $444, you can learn more about Focus Point International and Medjet below. I'll leave it to your imaginations to consider what must be done in order to save a Medjet client in danger. In the 48 minute Cyberpunk 2077 gameplay reveal, first shown behind closed doors at E3 2018, then later to the world, our protagonist V and partner Jackie are tasked with a rescue mission. The last known location before the target's tracker went dark takes them into a scav hideout. Scavengers who harvest implant technology to be sold on the black market at the cost of the victim's life. Naturally, V hopes to save the girl they seek, but currently knows nothing of her condition, nor the fact that she already has the highest Platinum Trauma Team membership. This also gives us the chance to see TT in action. These scavs are taking a huge risk messing with Platinum membership holders, but clearly the payoff for implants must be worth it. After fighting through the hideout, they reach their target who is barely alive being preserved in ice water, just long enough to harvest what the scavs want. Interestingly, human survival can take several directions depending on condition. In the real world we inhabit today, the brain can survive for up to 6 minutes after the heart stops. If cardiopulmonary resuscitation, also known as CPR, is started within 6 minutes of cardiac arrest, the brain may survive the lack of oxygen. After 6 minutes without CPR, the brain begins to die. In the world of Cyberpunk 2077 however, given technological advancements, one can imagine that these rules and times do not strictly apply. Interestingly, in the case of hypothermia, examples do exist of successful resuscitation even after 45 minutes of the heart stopping. V plugs into the biomonitor of the girl to assess her vital statistics, but the signal is being jammed. The immediate information shows us her name, ID, age, gender, blood type and trauma team membership level. Later on in the gameplay demo, we find ourselves in a mega building akin to something from Judge Dredd, where V lives, and clearly displayed is a trauma team advertisement. It reads, diagnose, heal, extract, followed by reaction time, 3 minutes, go platinum. Platinum being their highest membership package, which undoubtedly comes with a price tag, one which we don't actually know yet. As a slightly off topic point, there is a public announcement over the community tannoy about TT Platinum, but the voice selling the service actually sounds the same as the narrator of the gameplay in Boris, a lead writer at CDPR. To me, at least, anyway, what do you think? As an example, in this world, people pay with eddies, slang for Euro dollars. We make sure to root every detail in the world's lore, so everything has its purpose and stays believable. The prices in the lore of 2020 have most likely increased by 2077, and when explaining those prices in my first TT video, many of you reacted at how low it was considering the service you're getting for 100 eddies per minute, especially given the price of healthcare today in the United States. Sandra's list of medications on her Biomon suggests that she suffers from anxiety, nausea, moderate to severe pain and depression. She's a mess. Personally, I wonder if her ailments made her an easy target for the scabs. Currently, a virus on a shard in her neural socket is blocking her Biomon. 
therefore the emergency signal to the trauma team. Once removed, TT are informed and on their way expected to arrive in three minutes. This short section provides an incredible amount of information and indicates that a considerable level of research went into representing biological data and conditions accurately. Biomon initially shows 78 of 132 life functions at risk, which rapidly changes to 81. Sandra is in critical and immediate need of medical attention. Many of her bodily functions are close to shutting down, including her nervous system, which could be cause for the eye twitching. At this point, the trauma team know two things, the location and condition of the patient. They do not, however, know the conditions of the environment they're about to enter, but if necessary, they will shoot first and not ask questions later. As pointed out by Reddit user Crimson Boy, the TT arrival time for this encounter was actually just 65 seconds of the expected 180, much quicker than advertised. Perhaps they were already close by. As a powerful corporation, the way the trauma team execute an emergency evac is without emotion. Morality and ethics are in short supply. The code of conduct they live by is based around business. Get the job done quickly and successfully. If there is collateral including life, so be it. It's legal's problem. As both combat and medical specialists, a TT crew will approach the situation of risk with extreme prejudice and impunity. You do not want to be perceived as posing any kind of a threat near one of their clients. Do not confuse this with being hot-headed, however. They are cold and calculated. Here, V does not pose any obvious threat as she's preoccupied with the task of carrying the patient. Here, we get an insight into TT operating behavior. Military-grade weapons drawn and with stern instruction, V is ordered to place the patient on the stretcher, then forced back with a push and verbal warning. Place the patient on the stretcher. Five steps back, now! I said step back! TT-133 to control, patient NC-570. The immediate concoction of stimulants administered seems focused on treating blood flow and pressure as well as trauma and shock which similar to the Biomon information can be found in the real world. From here, the patient will be transported to a medical center on the AV4. Trauma team only have milliseconds to decide what their action will be in any given situation, combative and destructive, or constructive and controlling, or a mixture of all of them. One thing is for sure, de-escalation and negotiation seem to be off the table. Keep your distance. A subtle touch but easy to ignore is that Jackie with his gigantic gun stayed within the hideout during extraction. You can guarantee that the crew would not have reacted kindly to such weaponry on show. CDPR aided by Cyberpunk 2020 law have absolutely filled what could be easily a passing rescue mission with such detail and depth that if you're willing to search for it, it's right there waiting. Prior to the 48 minute gameplay reveal was a trailer showing what appears to be the same mission with an alternate path where TT show up guns blazing displaying their readiness and willingness to be engaged in combat. I wonder what led to this outcome. The scavs definitely weren't expecting them. V is looking to upgrade her cyberware. This takes us to a ripper doc named Victor specialized in such operations. He's Quite the interesting character if we take a moment to observe his practice. Clearly a boxing enthusiast with a competitive past. A match on the TV, trophies on the wall, a glove pendant round his neck, along with gym and heavy bag. Already we can see that Victor has a colourful story to tell if and when we learn it. The points of interest don't stop there however. On his leg is a distinctive trauma team logo which led the community to widely speculate the meaning behind it. Is he XTT? Is it a general medical symbol? The wilder theories ask if perhaps he killed a team member. Interestingly, Reddit user red 4 Square pointed out that it is forbidden by international law to use the red cross and red moon symbol, especially if mixed in with guns. That's why most video games use either green blue crosses or some variation of the symbol. This means that the trauma team logo needs to be an independent design unto itself. He follows this with a link to an article about a game developer who broke the Geneva Convention for the seemingly innocent use of a protected symbol. 
Other theories around our Ripadoc Victor are based on potential gang affiliation connected to his tattoos. To me, one of the most curious things about Victor Vector is the fact that he shows no obvious cyberware, just a mechanical slip-on operating glove which he requires a muscle stabilizing injection to even use safely. So we have a potential Xboxer who may or may not have been in the trauma team and although having access to body modification as a profession has chosen not to partake for what I'm sure are personal reasons. His passion for combat did see him work as a ringside physician for many many years. I would love to learn much more about this guy. Many questions remain of course about the universe of Cyberpunk 2077, but one thing is for sure, nothing you experience and see is there by accident. The depth and detail is without question staggering and even the smallest thing you can be sure is steeped in lore. As for Trauma Team, I can't wait to see what CDPR has in store for us. Will we see more about their weapons, backstory, armour, corporation? What about the complexity of circumstance when multiple clients are in need and of opposing sides? Can the client always be saved? Does gang affiliation affect membership or just eddies? Many layers can complicate a given moment depending on the situation. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Are you excited? Leave your ideas, thoughts and comments down below. If you'd like to see more lore videos, let me know. I'll catch you in the next one.